Hello everybody, my name's Seabro, and this is a video on how to stream to streaming services like OBS without using a capture card from your PS4. And now, basically this is a method that I kind of looked into and didn't see a whole lot of research upon it, and I kind of walked across this one on myself, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Now, the things you're going to need, of course, is PC. You're going to need your PS4. You're going to need a PS4 controller, and you're going to need a uh, USB mic. Now. What I have right here, yes, this is my capture card software. I use Elgato because I have an Elgato HD60 Pro internal capture card. And yes, I use an internal capture card because I use it for streaming more than just my PS4. But this is for other people who don't want to use the PSN PS4 streaming service because like myself, I really don't care to use it. So right here we can see we have my gameplay. This is from my actual PS4. That's on my TV, which no one can see. So I'm not crazy. I'm looking right at it. And, um... Well, basically, also we're going to need is this, and here's the key to it, is having two profiles. And now what I mean by that is we have our main profile for playing games and streaming and such and so, so forth. The second profile is simply a dummy profile, and it can be anything, anything you want it to be, just so long as it has an email address attached to it. And you can go to make, like Yahoo, and go to make an email called I'm a jerk at 63yahoo.com, whatever you want to call it. Just so long as you attach your second account from your PS4 to this email. And I've already got one set up, so basically what we're going to do. I just started up my PS4, and we're going to hold down the PS button. And I'm simply going to go down to Switch User. And what this is going to do is going to be access to my other, my dummy profile. I'm going to log into it. And when I switch profiles, it's going to change the color, of course, change the color on your controller to now your secondary profile. So now I am logged into my second profile while my first main profile is still active. And now, this is assuming you already have the PS4 remote downloaded. I call it the PC remote because it's actually the, the PS4 remote for the PC, so PS, PC remote just saves so much stuff. So you download the PS4 remote, and we go ahead and open, of course, open the software. And now from here, you want to go into your settings. And you want to go and set your settings to the highest resolution, which is eight, uh, the, not 800, it's 720p. And set your frame rate to uh, the highest it will go. That's if, of course, if your computer can handle all this when you stream. Now, the reason why we said 720 is because 720 is the absolute highest that the PS4 can broadcast in, which is no different than whether it be PC remote or actual broadcasting on PSN to Twitch, Ustream, or YouTube, however you want to, however it's streamed from the PS4 itself. And then from here, you uh, we sign in. Now, when we sign in, we don't sign into our main account. We sign into this dummy account, so it connects to that one and not the main one. And for obvious reasons, I'm not going to, so you go ahead and connect to it. Now, it might actually say, failed to connect. That's okay. It did that for me, too. Just hit OK, and then it's already connected. Hit Start. And once you hit Start, it'll connect to your second account. I'm going to go ahead and let it do this, and I'll explain why we're doing it this way. As soon as it connects. Any moment. Now. Okay. So as you can see, I have two screens. I have my PC remote, and I have my actual TV screen. Now, the reason why we do that, and you can... It, the reason why we, we're doing it this way is so, solely for um, the latency. Some people don't care about latency. For me, I do. I am about frame perfectness. <laughs> and what I simply mean by that is my actual capture software, it, because it's um, an integrated card, it only has roughly five frames of latency, which really isn't that big of a deal. But the uh, PC remote runs from 5 to 15, and even 5 frames, I can feel it when I play. I'm just simply using my Elgato software so you can see my TV. <laughs> anyway, well, and what, the, well, what I mean by the latency is when you press the button on the controller, because the way how the controller looks, notice I've already signed in to my PC remote. There's My light is no longer on, which means the only way to control the PC screen, I guess for the player that signed into that, is you have to connect to the PC. And because of the how long it takes the signal to travel, there's actually a latency between the button press and the time it happens on the, well when you do it early. And that really throws me off, especially when I'm playing games like Destiny or Overwatch. So to get past this, we want to be able to play the game on the TV. That's where we're getting instant signal, at least as instant as it can be. So here we are. We got our setup. PC remote is signed into our second player. Our first player is still kind of in limbo. So now what we're going to do is going to simply turn our controller back on, and then the PS4 is going to ask us, who gets the controller? Just simply sign into your main profile. Now, if you notice, I'm back in my main profile. Well, I'm signed in. Now we have to get to the main profile. And 
now I'm on my main profile, and if you'll notice, I have full control over it. And remember, this Elgato software is displaying what's on my TV. This is currently what's there, and you can, and even more proof of the latency, you can hear it. There's a little bit of latency in between what's happening on my TV and what's happening here. That is what is a killer when it comes to, like I said, trying to be frame perfect. However, being frame perfect doesn't really matter when it comes to streaming, and that's where we get into this. So now we have our captured PC remote image, and I'm going to go ahead and just drop this because we don't need this anymore. What we're concerned with is this is now broadcasting video and audio to our PC, so just take your headset, plug it in your PC, now you're getting audio. 5 to 15 frames isn't, you can't really hear it, so it just, well you can hear it because I've got my other software opened up right now. Um, so you simply plug your headset into your computer and now you can hear all gameplay in your headset. And from here it's just simple as opening up OBS and creating your OBS uh, settings and your scenes and voila. From there it's just like streaming normally from OBS. And from here you can still use your YouTube, uh, play music, you can play videos from YouTube, you can set up all your subscription notifications, follow notifications, however you want to do it, stream to whatever you want. And that's the beauty of it. Now, like I said, there were a couple things we needed uh, in the PC, uh, PS4 controller. I needed another mic. The reason why I say you need, the, need another mic is the mic in your headset is only going to be working for your PC, which is also really cool because you can talk to your buddies on Skype, Team Chat, Discord, wherever you want, but only through this headset. Um, I went out and bought a cheapo little $20 mic on Amazon, and that's actually plugged into my PS4. That's so when I'm ch uh, in a party with my buddies on PS4, they can still hear me. I should have said on PSN because of the Vita and such, but so they can still hear me. And that's pretty much the only investment you're going to need unless you have, just happen to have one laying around. Or your PS camera will work as well as a mic. Anyways, and that's pretty much it. It's not really that difficult of a process. This video is going to take longer than what the actual <laughs> process is. So I digress. Anyways, thank you for taking time to watch my video. My name's Zebra, and I hope to see you all again.